All right, I wanted to talk to you guys about vision. I'm trying to just get it out there because this is recording number seven, take seven. And we've been silly and joking, my son and I, and then we have, we're at the hospital, so we've had interruptions. But um, I am a person who is, I have, I have a lot of visions and goals, and one of the most frustrating things in the world is to not, to have those visions and goals like sitting here gnawing at me every day and knocking on the door and saying, I'm still here, I'm still here, let us out, let us out. <laughs> and... Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about that because um, if you are a person also who has like visions and things or that you see vision, you don't just see what everybody else sees, then it's it's a great thing. It's an, It can be an exciting thing. I took a trip with my family once to Indian Wells, California, which is not far from Palm Springs, California, and it's a resort. Those are resort communities, resort towns. and. Um, I remember once we were getting close to our destination and off of the freeway I could see these um, pretty hotels and like sporadically and you see like some fast food restaurants or um, shops and things like that along the way and what got me was on one side of the freeway was this new construction, this ongoing development and on the other side of the freeway I saw like hills and like sand dunes and not sand dunes but hills and you could see sand and rocks and things like that. Um, now. The, the thought that immediately came to mind was one person could look at this picture and did look at this picture and saw sand, rocks, tumbleweed, hills. Another person looked at the same picture and saw a resort. They saw beautiful buildings, they saw cabanas and pools and golf carts and golf courses and they took that vision and ran with it and to this, now, now today we have these, these resorts and things in place. So it's all about perspective. What do you see with the in your mind's eye? Um, not just, you know, of course, with your natural eyes, but what can you see in the eyes of your mind? We are creative people. Um, a lot of people are made with different... I, I was took classes on um, trying to get my teaching certification when I was getting my teaching certification, and I learned that we have different learning styles. Some of us are visual. Some of us are audio, audio, audio or... Audio learners, we learn through hearing. Some are sensory learners, we learn through touch, and we learn through visual and things like that. Um, just So there are different ways that we learn. But as Christians, I believe, as children of God, we should learn to become visual and audible learners. Touch is where we get into trouble, because if we can't touch it, and if we can't see with their natural eyes, then it doesn't exist and it can't happen. But if we can learn to see with the eyes of faith, the eyes of the Spirit, and be able to hear what the Lord is saying and tune out everything else, then I believe that we can see things come to pass in our lives beyond our wildest imagination, beyond, beyond our wildest dreams. A lot of people don't get their visions off of the ground because they allow fear to stand in the way, what man will say or has said that struck down the vision, or finances, lack of thereof, lack of contacts and, and um, lack of initiative. Um, and when I say contacts, I meant like connections with people that know how to get you where you need to be. Uh, lack of initiative or obstacles, things come in your way that keep hindering you from getting to where you want to get. And any number of those can be frustrating. They can be just downright frustrating. I had a dream once that I was in this room. It was like a jail cell. And and I had my bed on there. I could see my sleeping area. I could see a table that had books on it, note, a notepad and pen where I was working on my, my writings and things that the Lord had given me. And I remember I would get up and take breaks, and I looked out of this door. I used to work at a jail, and it was set up just like that. You could see through. It's like a regular door, but it had a glass. Um, most of it was cut out like in glass, and you could see out of the door, and you could people could see in. So I was peering out of this, this window on my doorway, my door, and I could see people walking freely about, and I was so frustrated. I would look at them, and I'd go back and sit on my bed and plop down and just like, i go back to my writing after getting fr frustrated, and then I kept, the cycle, was ongoing cycle was going on, on, and I was so frustrated. I said, how do I get out of here? I want to get out. And when I said that, I looked, and I saw these two men talking. They were standing at a distance outside of my jail cell and they were looking my way and next to them or in between them was this really tall man he was like an olive complexion and his hair came down to about here so it was black dark hair and he was talking to them and they could hear me and I and or the angel could hear me and I could hear the, what he and the men were saying and he said do you want to come out he looked at me like are you ready to come out and I was like yeah but I was unsure and when he came to the door he looked at me and he said are you ready to come out now 
And I said, yeah, I think so. And I, and I looked at my writings. I said, yeah, I'm ready. I said, I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm tired of being stuck in this room and locked in here. I'm frustrated. I'm ready to come out. So he said, if you're truly ready to come out, I've been sent here to help you. And he said, I'm going to break you through. And he took his hand and he broke through the glass. And the glass shattered. And then he put his hand out and took me by the hand and helped me like while I stepped over the threshold of the door. And then I came out and I, I said, that's, that's it? I'm free? And I was so happy. I went out for a minute, walked over with him. We were walking and talking. We came to this parking garage, and he was going to go do something really quickly and then come back to my aid. And he t I think he said, go get your stuff ready. So I was going to go get my things out of the room, and I never wanted to go back in that room again. But I know what that dream represented. It was fear. It's the fear that I've, I've kind of always had this um, concern about what people would say or, you know, base what I do on what people say. And, and I, I'm so sick and tired of that. It's like being in jail because your hands are tied and you're locked up um, behind what you want to do. And it, it blocks you. And it's nothing but the enemy because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, I had another dream where um, I was, something was going on. I was at this place and it seemed like I ended up on this houseboat. And there was a woman there that, like in the middle of the houseboat, were these cabinets, and they had these green curtains, like four curtains on either side, like one here, one here, one here. And then um, this woman had these, I remember walking by, and she hurried up, she was like, getting something out of one of the cabinets, and when she saw me, she hurried up and closed the curtain. And I said, wait a minute, I thought I, I caught a glimpse of some towels in there, and I, I said, can I see that? And, oh, she, that's nothing, it's, there's nothing in there. I said, oh, no, I, I thought I saw some towels and things in there. She said, no, it's nothing. And I said, please, can I see it? And she said, okay. She was like, "Don't laugh," type of thing. So I opened it up and I pulled out the most this beautiful towel. She had really like she had handcrafted it. She took the time to embroider it, and it was really nice. I said, "These are beautiful." I said, "These are very nice." I said, "Do you sell these?" "Oh no, I don't sell them." She said, "I don't think anybody would buy them." I said, "How do you know if you don't put it out there?" And then I remember telling her I was encouraging her. I said, "I would buy this." I, and I said, "This was so well done that I I thought you know it had been." handcraft it for a store or something and that these you were, you were already selling these and she said no and she said you, you really think people will be interested or they would really buy it I said of course they would and so she was going to take them out and put them on display but she had them all covered up and I believe the Lord is saying through that even with my own things that as long as they sit here or maybe they're sitting in, in your garage somewhere or on a shelf somewhere or in your computer somewhere or a notepad somewhere and they're being covered up and no one is seeing them and when people would be interested in what you have to say people would be interested in buying what you have to sell um, so don't let it sit covered don't let your vision go you know covered up and don't let it sit here what if the people like I gave the example for Indian Wells what if they never took their vision beyond the, the mind this ink pen I'm holding vision in my hand this is a vision that became someone's reality and maybe it started off it's been developed along the way but you know we there are styluses that people would carve into the wood and and the stones that can during the stone ages and things like that sure sweetie pie um so people we're still in the hospital my son's there um he's inspired too he's got vision <laughs> but um they would write into stone or they use charcoal whatever they could use but someone had the vision to somehow get ink into a pen and use this for writing and you know, it's just, it's ongoing, it's, but this is vision become reality. A tablet, I'm holding my son's tablet in my hand, and this is vision become reality. So what if these things stayed in your mind, stayed in the, the minds of these people who came up with this, businesses and things that we have, all the time I'm looking like, oh, that, that was a thought. You know, someone actually took that thought and they ran with it and they brought it to pass. And one thing you'll find too, sometimes if God's given you something, you don't do anything with it, they say if you don't use it, you lose it. He might give that idea to somebody else because he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and you've been saying for years, 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 Lord, I'll, I'll do it, I'll get it done, I'll get it done, and you don't. Well, he'll give it to someone who will do something with it. And then you'll be like, oh, I wish. And, and there's nothing like having dissatisfaction. I think that's one of the worst things that can gnaw at you the most is dissatisfaction with could have, would have, should have. You know, I hate the could have, would have, should have. And I, I hate to to even have that hanging over my head, like some type of regret. I, people, I know we don't like regrets, but we're not people of regret. We don't like that. But anyhow, I hope that I've said something to inspire you. Um, I have some time tonight. It's a little slow tonight here at the hospital. I'm kind of a little bored here, but um, I hope I said something to inspire you. And write the vision and make it plain. I know it's not talking about that kind of a vision. It's talking about something the Lord had shown. It's from the book of um, Hab Habakkuk or Habakkuk, whichever way you pronounce it. But, um, but write your vision down. The Lord gives us things for a reason, and 
yes, he's coming soon, but in the time that we have, you know, we, we don't have to just sit idle. We can't, he doesn't want us to just sit idle. He, he said to work while it's day. Sorry, my son's lowering his bed. He said to work while it's day, for the night is coming when no man will be able to work. So let's get the work done. Let's do the things that the Lord has given us. Let's get them out there, because you never know. You just never know what the Lord is going to do with it. So um, God bless you today. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you can hear me because the bed is really loud. But thanks. Th it's okay, baby. Thank you for joining me. And I hope I've said something that sparks something in you. I know it's truly been sparked in me. And once that fire is ignited, it's hard to kill it. Don't let anyone destroy what God has given you and put in your mind. Uh, even if it's finances, whatever it may be, God will bring it to pass. Commit your way to Him, He says in... in he will bring it to pass. It's a book of Psalms. He will bring it to pass. God bless you today and take care.